Good morning, everyone. I'm Vince Lancey, and this is the Market Rundown. Today, we will be discussing a new report by Goldman that, frankly, is groundbreaking in its transparency of what is actually going on in the gold market. We will share some excerpts and some comments about that with you, as well as some seasonality comments in context for premium. That is the home page. Let's look at the markets first. The dollar is up 29 at 101.04. Ten-year yields are 374, down four. S&P 500 is 576. I'm sorry, 57.63, up 12 handles. The VIX is 1667, down five basis points. Gold is on the highs of the evening at 26.51, up 17 and change. Silver, also on the highs, but not as strong. 31.44, up 30 cents. Copper, similarly up, but not as strong. 4.53, 4.54, up almost two cents. Oil is down again, but off its lows, 68.59. Natural gas is 265, stable. Bitcoin is 63,900, up 600 after taking a tumble yesterday. Ethereum is 26.38. Palladium is 997, down four. Platinum is 983, up a buck and a half. Drum roll, please, for the grains. Grains are continue to be semi-violently mixed. Soybean is 1065, down four and a half cents. Wheat, conversely, is 593, up three cents. And corn is, again, unchanged at 414. There you have the gold hourly market chart. Uh, there's been buying all night, and it's actually ramping up into the LME, LBMA, whatever they're calling themselves these days, the, the London Gold Fix, which is what it used to be called. Okay. There we go. We're going to discuss a report that came out yesterday uh, by Goldman Sachs, and we're going to go through the what we believe are the most important points of it for you here and now and share the rest of it with premium subscribers uh, later on. All right. There are four key points we've identified in this report. The first is Goldman raises their target from 2,700 to 2,900. Goldman's secretive buyer is also discussed. It's not necessarily their buyer, but it is a buyer based out of London. Gold is in fact resetting correlations with the West. They use the word reset. New gold model fundamentals explain pretty much no one else is talking about the last two, uh, but we're going to get them out there uh, for you now so you can get a handle on them when they start being discussed in full. So let's get to that right now. Point one, Goldman raises their target from 2,700 to 2,900. Quote, we raise our gold price forecast from 27 per troy ounce to 2,900 per troy ounce for early 2025 for two reasons. Those reasons are attached. There's the headline, the now casting concept. That's a, uh, it's a real time update on central bank activity. Actually very good. Next point two, Goldman identifies secret or secretive buyer. The bank openly discusses increased secretive buying of gold in London being held for an unknown player embedded in a walkthrough, a thorough walkthrough, I would say, of the LBMA Swiss bullion market place. Let me just roll this down a little bit so you can see the picture a little bit better. Quote, our estimates of China's institutional gold purchases in the London OTC market align with the PBOC exports, but tend to be higher, start earlier, and last longer. While the PBOC reported no additional purchases after April, our now cast estimates 50 tons of institutional purchases from China on the London OTC market in May. We'll explain what that means in a second. The bank does not outright say that the buyer is China. They really have no 
facts to say that. They merely lay out the historical patterns of China buying. China buying, as we have discussed here several times, via the PBOC, SAFE, the military, which does not have to report, and other proxies is almost always higher for longer than is stated publicly. So, for example, when China announced that they were no longer buying gold through the PBOC, they were still buying gold. They were just buying gold through other entities. The military buys gold. They hold their gold separately and off balance sheet. SAFE, an organization that polices their markets, uh, inflow and outflow of metals, also purchases gold uh, and other entities, which we're not really privy to. They also buy before they announce and they buy after they announce. So the buying has been going on for a lot longer. And the only reason they announced for this brief period of time, for this, I think, 18 month period of time, was to convey confidence to the other BRICS partners that they were in fact buyers. The graphic, this graphic, there are a couple graphics, but this one here shows the London supplies and the Swiss supplies. Interestingly, Switzerland, just a quick aside comment, Switzerland, um, Swiss holdings are usually for retail, for high net worth retail, you know, uh, bars. Uh, however, uh, they've been holding for much bigger clients recently, and that would imply a central bank. And in this case, it would imply China. Moving on, the gold reset is announced. Those are our words, not theirs, but it's accurate. It's accurate. In this report, they also reveal their take on if correlations with rates are broken or not. Their conclusion is a golden reset is in progress. Quote, while the gold price to rates relationship remains intact and changes, the secret buyer has elevated prices and reset the relationship in absolute terms. You've probably seen this chart many times. This is February, 2022, when gold prices continue to rally despite real rates inverted uh, increasing. So gold has been ignoring real rates. We have discussed this many times. Let's read the last statement that we have here. Stated another way, Goldman is saying gold is readjusting its correlation against Western rates as opined in this space for some time. Gold has been ignoring uh, real rates. It has been ignoring correlations with the dollar, and it has been ignoring it because, frankly, without being facetious or sarcastic, they want the gold. They actually need the gold and have a reason to use it. Therefore, rates and dollar proxies are not a reason to buy gold or not buy gold. They need it for entirely different self-sustaining reasons. It's not to say these correlations are broken, as Goldman says. These correlations will reassert. We have called it beta. The beta for correlations is changing. So they will reassert again once everyone gets their gold in the proper place. You have my gold. I want it. Get it back to me. I need to buy more gold. I buy. Everyone has their gold. Then traditional correlations will reassert themselves. If you need a financial correlation to look at right now that is paralleling gold's price, you need to look at Chinese government bond yields. China's government bonds, at the same time that gold decoupled from uh, U.S. yields, they coupled even more closely with Chinese government bond yields. Moving on to the next point, Goldman reveals new gold market fundamentals. The last few months have seen many banks overhaul how they look at gold pricing, which did not go unnoticed in this space. Goldman, along with several other banks like Citibank, MUFG, Goldman Sachs, they had already done it once, hinted at it, BOA and UBS recently revealed a new way to model gold prices. Now, we've discussed what's changed in multiple posts prior to that. Let's focus on Goldman here for the moment. This forecast also relies on our rule of thumb. This is a new rule of thumb, or at least a new public rule of thumb, that 100 tons of physical demand lifts gold prices by at least 2.4%, the lower bound of our regression estimate. The Goldman Sachs new model, we feel, is more transparent, is quantified, and reveals the logic of their new analysis. Very briefly, to recall these new models, banks have been reticent to be outright bullish on gold for their public clients because it was contrary to dollar strength 
and they did not want to contradict their macro models. However, now that they have factored in uh, the fundamentals or the central bank buying, they can now readjust and recalibrate their models, giving clients permission to buy based on their modeling. Goldman's actually, Goldman's report actually shares the rationale behind this. Now, I'm sure they all have this rationale. And as will be discussed in premium, I'm sure Goldman did not just figure this out yesterday. They've known this for quite some time. However, they needed to make sure before they shared it publicly. Anyway, we feel that their model, this report is remarkably transparent in their process. Uh, it quantifies, they can't show everything, and it reveals the logic of their new analysis. We expect uh, more from the other banks as they up the ante on this. We'll discuss why we think they are being so frank, uh, again, in premium. You can see more breakdown of all this as well as some more aspects of the report in the links here and in the next section. News and analysis. This is the premium report we were just sampling for you. Second, Tanzania orders gold dealers to reserve 20% production for purchase by the central bank. You may or may not recall Tanzania is a um, very large gold producer. I'm not sure how much. I don't have the number handy, but it's pretty significant. And it's also significant that Tanzania also was, uh, this is the second time they've gone to producers and said, we want you to sell to us. So uh, the, the concept here is nations are all nationalizing resources. The BRICS are nationalizing natural resources. No, you can't have it. Yes, you can have it, but you have to give us 20% of what you pull out of the ground here. Yes, you can have it, but you have to pay us a tax. Latin America. Yes, you can have it, but you have to pay our unions more, right? Populist left. Uh, China. Yes, you can have it, but you have to build a factory here. BASF is doing that. So that's all different ways, all different flavors of the same concept. And the concept is to protect natural resources as we get further and further into a mercantile or mercantilistic age where you must export more than you import. And that means finished goods need natural resources and people are going to pay more for those natural resources. Tanzania just upping the ante and doing it again. Last post there, gold price in Swiss francs is finally breaking out. That's a post by Jesse Colombo, someone that we recommend. Um, Jesse has been a technician for some time. And we noticed about three months ago, he had made a comment about gold needing to break out uh, in every currency before finally really lifting off. And that's a very, it's a technical comment, but it's a valid point from the fundamentals when you look at gold as not breaking out in a currency, well, then it's not being bought in a currency. So every currency has to break out uh, in gold to show that it's no longer the dollar holding gold back. Okay, so anyway, that happened in Swiss francs recently, and he wrote about that, and he's you know uh, going through that a little bit more. Anyway, uh, he's on Substack as well, and we reciprocally recommend each other. Moving on. All right, data on deck. Unemployment is this week. Hal yesterday said uh, he was, his tone was considering reducing the speed of rate cuts. Stocks did not care. They rallied. Go figure. All right, stay with us now. We're going to go through the implications of seasonality and everything else. Also, we will be uh, releasing the full text of this report in another post later today. All right, let's take a look at the charts before we go into the premium aspect. All right, gold hourly. Okay, let's start with the bare technical comment. Excuse my sniffle there. Just from an RSI perspective. You no, know, that doesn't mean anything right now, right? We're above all those. Gold has broken its trend line almost 
uh, below a blue line, which doesn't really mean much, but you could see that gold is working off being overbought on the daily. Now it has done this before at higher levels, rallies, look at the chart, right? Bull flag, rallies, bull flag, rallies. This could very well be a repeat of that pattern. And this has been the chart in gold. This is a bull market, rallies, bull flag, rallies. That's not a bull flag. Rallies, bull flag, bull flag, bull flag. You're getting this all the way up. And so you're getting higher hires in the RSI as well. So this is working off being overbought. And it looks bearish on the RSI or maybe the MACD if you look at that. Uh, but it's not in and of itself bearish yet. Now you go to the weekly and the weekly is overbought. And it's possibly just starting to work off being overbought but it doesn't show it as being a sale, okay? So the daily, if the daily can work from being overbought to back to normal, meaning if the bull, the bull flag breaks, this is a bull flag, folks. It's a very simple bull. Here's the rally, here's the flag. This is a bull flag. If it breaks, this goes back up, the weekly turns up, and the monthly is again reaffirmed. The monthly is not going anywhere right now. Okay. So technically speaking, in the short, I'm giving you a short term perspective. Gold is overbought, working it off. And heaven forbid, it might actually have worked it off in one day, which is not really surprising given how the market has been acting. Look, there are dips that come from margin raises. This is a two-day dip, and it could be over. Could be over. I'm not saying it is. Silver. Okay. First, I always start with the bad news, folks. First, the bad news. Silver is not acting as good as it should, given the stimulus coming out of China. Okay? Copper, nice rally. Silver, nice rally. Little to no follow through compared with Chinese stocks. The whole point of Chinese stimulus is to get money into stocks. Of course, money is going to go into uh, precious metals and iron ore. You're reading about that everywhere now, right? But this time, they really are going to, in the longer term, focus on getting money into stocks. Does that mean they're going to sell silver? No. Does that mean they're going to sell gold? No. They're just going to print more money and say, put it in stocks. That's literally what they're going to do. But the lack of follow through in the base and precious metal, I'm sorry, in the base metals and silver's basic aspect is part of that is telling you that the silver gold ratio may not continue lower as we hoped. Now the good news. The good news is Goldman once again puts out a report yesterday. This one is on copper. And we have said this a million times when you're talking about copper coming out of Goldman, you're thinking about silver coming out of their trading desk. They're once again beginning to pound the table that I'm almost quoting them. Copper will be higher by the end of the year. Sounds like buy season to me. And if copper will be higher by the end of the year, and if they're right, I'm not saying they are, then silver is going to be much higher. So you can see Goldman's reports are setting the table for buy season if it hasn't come a little bit early already. All right. That's it. So the bad news is in the micro, silver doesn't care about the stimulus as much as you would hope it would. The good news is it's going to get better and there's going to be more stimulus coming out of China, not less, more. This is the Draghi moment. The very exciting Goldman report uh, uh, for all the reasons I just discussed with you and there's more to it uh, coming up right now. Uh, let's start that conversation